So Wahyu, I wonder if you could just introduce yourself briefly, your work, and maybe to start us off to, it strikes me that there are a lot of stereotypes and maybe misconceptions about what a digital nomad is. How would you define that term? Yeah, so uh, my name is Wahyu. Thank you again for the invitation. Uh, I would say that I do multiple things, but my current focus is on impact investment uh, fund management. So I run my own uh, company, uh, investment consulting company, as well as law firm that is helping startup to relocate uh, in, in Bali or in Indonesia. And uh, speaking about your question, uh, a lot of people actually are confused about what the digital nomad is, especially in Indonesia and especially for public officials. In fact, just yesterday, I was invited by uh, the head of uh, intelligence officer in uh, from Murah Immigration in, in Bali, Jimbaran. Uh, and we discussed a lot of things about digital nomad and uh, the result of our discussion we will form um, Focus, focus discussion forum like or a think tank. Uh, and uh, from here, we would like to bring this to the next level, uh, how we will be able to find the best way to design public policy that can be win-win for government, local businesses, and foreigners who identify themselves as digital nomads or remote professionals. So I told them that digital nomad is not a, prof not a profession. Digital nomad is a community, it's a lifestyle, and also it's a it's a movement or it's a new trend so uh my goal personally and i also try to be on the same page with uh, public officials that i have met our goal as indonesian be it as private sector or uh, public sector we would like to make indonesia as one of the best destination for working and vacation or we call it workation because since COVID happened we cannot travel in a short time. Uh, I think the new trend for the travel industry will be long-term travel. So uh, as Indonesia is the biggest archipelago country, uh, we have so many beautiful islands, beaches. You know, why don't we really capture this as a, as a new positioning of our country and make our country, uh, Indonesia, as the best destination for vacation? And also, and also in fact, the biggest GDP of Indonesia uh, is still from tourism uh, for the last couple of years. So, yeah. Well, to your, to your point, Wahyu, it seems like Bali is one of the more popular destinations for digital nomads on a, on a global scale. And I wonder, from your experiences, since you've spent a lot of time there and worked very closely with the digital nomad community there, can you tell us a little bit about what the digital nomad community can contribute to a place like Bali, a place like Indonesia. Why would a digital nomad visa be good for Indonesia? Okay, so uh, that's a very good question. Actually, uh, we can we can we can speak specifically for Bali, and we can speak generally for Indonesia. Let's start by uh, speaking specifically for Bali. Bali relies so heavily on tourism and. Uh, you know, when tourism dies, the economy in Bali collapses, and it's very hard transitioning for Bali economically uh, from tourism to transition to non-tourism uh, industry. So I believe that this is the good wake-up call for Bali, uh, so that Bali has to diversify uh, its economic model, and uh, but at the same time, we will also we should not neglect the potential that we have, meaning that, yes, we can still leverage tourism if we have the right regulation and if we have the right protocol after COVID, right? So uh, I think the best, the best tourism model for Bali is to be able to build sustainable tourism model. So uh, if, in fact, Bali is well known as the place for people who are looking for their spirituality, learn about sustainability, learn about nature, learn about culture, and a lot of uh, vegetarian and fe vegan restaurants here in Bali. So uh, when people come to Bali, it's all about lifestyle. They wanna have work-life balance and a good lifestyle between work and the quality of life. So uh, this is very big potential for Indonesia 
Indonesia itself and for Bali particularly. Uh, that's why I think uh, digital nomad visa will play an important role because we will be able to attract professional people who work digitally, remotely, and with that profession alone, they, they have a different skill set. And uh, what government wants to see from foreign investment or foreign capital are usually two things. Number one is to create job opportunities as many as possible to the local people. Number two is the knowledge and technology transfer and attracting people like digital nomads and remote professionals. This is the best way to do these two things. And if government uh, will you know, make the regulation more efficient, uh, more clear also in terms of what's not legal, what's legal, what's uh, allowed, what's not allowed, I think there will be a lot of uh, good quality of digital nomads and remote professionals that want to come to Bali because Bali is also, I think, set up by Lonely Planet or one of the travel magazine as number one or top, top three or top five, the most desired destination to visit after COVID. And speaking about Indonesia uh, in, a, in a more general uh, uh, term, like Indonesia as a country, Bali as part of Indonesia. So Indonesia has so many islands. We have like beaches that have pink sand. We have beaches that have, you know, like beautiful, beautiful beaches that you can see on the postcard, usually uh, if you go travel. And why don't we optimize our resources in Indonesia uh, because we, we are archipelago countries, which means that we are blessed to have these beautiful islands that can be promoted as the best tourism destination. So Bali can be the gateway. Uh, sorry, Bali can be the first gate. And then from Bali, uh, you know, they can spread out to Indonesia. And I also propose to the government, maybe we can make Bali a special economic zone. So in terms of that special, special economic zone, that's another topic that we, we will discuss. It, it sounds like this is a, an effort that has gone in many different directions because the, the effort to, to get a digital nomad visa is a lot more complicated than just what one person or one government official uh, has the ability to decide, right? I, I'm wondering, given that you've been working with multiple entities within government, also within business, um, both here in Indonesia and internationally, do you have a message for those in government or those in decision-making positions um, who can make something like a digital nomad visa a reality? Is there something that you would like to, to say to them or you would like for them to consider? Yes, uh, dear bapak-bapak dan ibu-ibu yang terhormat. <laughs> Uh, for those who are sitting on the government, I think it's the best time now to involve private sector uh, when it comes to designing public policy. So it's, it's, it's the best time today, now more than ever, I think after COVID, to be able to enhance uh, PPP, private public partnership, so that when government designs public policy, it will be aligned uh, with the interests of private sectors. I believe that government is as regulator and private sectors is operator. So if these both vehicles cannot you know, work together parallelly, uh, our country is not be able to progress. So basically as a regulator, uh, it has to regulate things that can make operators work easily, effectively, efficiently, uh, and also innovatively. So I think it's, the, it's time for us to be able to think about public policies designing process innovatively. So when we design public policy, it's not from one perspective, but also it's so important to involve another, or to get another perspective and involve uh, such as uh, private sectors so that the public policies can serve and work uh, the best way to serve uh, public, sorry, to work the best way to serve all of us as a country, you know, not just uh, to serve uh, government uh, as well as to serve its citizens, uh, in this case, uh, serve, uh, private sectors. So uh, I think the way we do public policy designing 
uh, we cannot keep the old system. So we have to have new system, new mindset, uh, you know, so that the world after COVID is very disruptive and we are living in fully uncertain time. So when we live in this uncertain time, we have to be really agile. We have to be really innovative. We have to be really creative. And in, in Indonesian government system, unfortunately, it's very still bureaucratic, bureaucratically heavy. You know, like you have to talk to this department, to that ministry, to this department. And we can simplify that actually with the technology. So us as a private sectors, we can help with that. So, for example, uh, I, uh, if you ask me to build AI or machine learning technology for government to be able to provide solution, we can do that. My, my background is a software engineer and also uh, I have a, a software company. Uh, so it's not, it's not my intention to promote my company, but my point is that why don't we sit together as a private sector and a, a, a public sector and try to find out what is actually the critical problems and then we together will be able to find a solution for that and we, we will be able to build and provide that solution for for greater good for all of us uh, uh, as a nation thank you wahyu uh, before i let you go since you brought up COVID, i i would like to get your thoughts on one final question i'm curious to know if you have any predictions for what's going to happen with the digital nomad community post COVID or what are you seeing in terms of how this community of people has changed or is changing uh, since the months when the pandemic first started? Uh, well, I cannot just answer that with one certain fixed question, uh, answer, but what I would say is that I think the world in general will change and uh, in terms of digital from digital online community i think uh people will like to have i would say second base home right so with with all these digital nomads they have their own country but then uh i think the thing is with indonesia we are blessed to be in a equator and being in tropical climate so for for so many people out there who live in cold countries they really would like to escape from hardcore lockdown and then to be able to live uh, by the beach under the sun under this tropical climate and they would like to have this second home base and for post-covid i think if we speak about uh, humanity it's 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 more needed than ever uh, for us to be able to work together, come together, unite as a, as, a, as a human, to be able to work collaboratively regardless of your nationality, and to be able to basically provide uh, solutions that can solve our uh, problems starting from our regional problems. So a lot of digital nomads actually, they are very socially uh, aware people. So when they are in Bali, they always ask me, hey, Wahyu, how can I do social events, charity events without having to uh, break the law? So that's why uh, I personally set up Yayasan Digital Nomad Indonesia or Digital Nomad Indonesia Foundation and Digital Nomad International Association as a legal entity, as a vehicle, as a legal platform to be able to provide uh, opportunity for uh, locals and expats, uh, in this case, digital nomad community people, to be able to uh, execute and launch some uh, social initiative. So this is as a proof where, you know, uh, a lot of these expats and digital nomads are very uh, social, uh, socially aware. And also on top of that, uh, we are building crowdfunding platform that can also help SMEs and uh, a lot of digital nomads that I met here in Bali, they are willing to be involved financially or to be involved uh, by providing resources to build a platform. So I feel like the world after COVID, people just come together and uh, people are united, you know? Like before COVID, it's like they live their own bubble. The expats, they live in their own bubble. The locals, they live in their own bubble and then there's, there's nothing in between uh, meeting uh, in the middle, you know, but now everyone is just like 
looking forward to working together. Doesn't matter if you're local, doesn't matter if you're expat, doesn't matter your status is where you're from. So I think we need now the clear regulation for, for, for them. I mean, for, for these foreigners who identify themselves as digital nomad. And as a local people and local business, we need also the local economy to to, to cir circulate, right? And uh, as Bali still heavily relies on tourism, I think it makes sense for Bali to be able to still attract tourists, but with, let's say, tourist 2.0 instead of tourist 1.0. So tourist 2.0 is those who brings values, knowledge, technology transfers, those who bring potential financial uh, uh, spendings or values by incorporating their company here, by doing business with the local partners here, by developing certain projects here, and those who are looking to stay long-term in Bali between six months to two years. So I think this is the best time for Bali to go to the next level when it comes to transforming uh, their tourism uh, into sustainable, sustainable tourism model. Thank you, Wahyu Taufik of Digital Nomad Indonesia. Really a pleasure seeing you today. Thank you so much for sharing your perspectives and your experience with us. And good luck to you with all of your projects. Too many to name, but yeah, look forward to seeing you again, hopefully in Bali. <laughs> yes, yes, looking forward to seeing you in Bali or maybe in Surabaya. Yeah, I want to Surabaya. Yeah. Surabaya <laughs> there you go. Take care, Wahyu. Thank you so much. Take care. Take Have care. Great. Bye.